Hello guys and welcome to the next video from the Volvo SR Reliable series. In today's video we will be looking at the process of cleaning and removing the EGR valve and intake manifold of this VA engine, something which is a well known weakness but if you know how to cure it, it will save you having to buy a brand new one, something which dealership would easily offer. Enough talking, let's get into it. So we start off with removing the air inlet cover which needs 6mm hex socket. Next, we remove the plastic inlet. To remove the air filter, we need to release the zip tie by pulling it and also loosen the hose clamp. Next, we start with removing the peripherals so we can access the manifold. You need to get the 30 Torx bit and that's pretty much what's gonna be needed for most of the disassembling. We need to disconnect the fuel lines from the pump as they stay in the way. I was initially hoping I wouldn't need to remove the rail feeding pipe but ended up removing it just because it's easier to take the manifold out. It would be sensible to put something around the fuel lines in order to protect them from dirt. In my case I went for earplugs. So we carry on with uh, peripherals removal. The wiring harness is held by a couple of screws to the engine. Next, we want to get rid of the vacuum reservoir. You may also want to enumerate the vacuum lines order, although it's hard to get them wrong. Now we can move on to removing the EGR to manifold pipe. On one side of it is still held by T30 torx screw and on the other side is by 13mm hex nuts.
so that's how the pipe looks. To be fair, I was expecting worse. Next, we need to release the manifold from the intercooler pipe. The way to release is by pulling the right end of it towards the air filter housing until it pops out slightly. Now we can finally unscrew the manifold bolts which are held by 5 11mm bolts and a bottom hidden one with 10mm head. You're gonna need some ratchet extensions to be able to reach that last bolt. So I subsequently decided to remove the uh, swerve actuator which probably wasn't necessary but it was easy enough. The fuel rail feed pipe you certainly want to remove, you can do it with 70mm spanner. So we can now give a try to the manifold, I'm not gonna lie to you, I did spend a good half an hour trying to get it out, just make sure the clamp is still released and it should come out. 3.28 AM So having a quick inspection of the manifold and valves inlet, again it's messy but could be worse. You may want to split the throttle body from the manifold and spray a bit of a carb cleaner into them and let them soak. Having done that, we can now focus on the EGR valve. It has two coolant supply hoses which we need to remove. Videos online suggest training the whole cooling system, but I would say that's not necessary as the EGR cooler would contain no more than 200 milliliters. Having done that, we also want to disconnect the exhaust side EGR pipe which needs 30 mm socket. The EGR is held by three 10mm bolts, two of which are at the obvious place but the third one is a tricky one simply because it's placed underneath the EGR at the round middle point but you can't see anything so try to remain patient. So we can now move to the unpleasant part. For the cleaning I've used carb cleaner and acetone for the EGR. A small brush can come really handy as well. To separate the EGR from the cooler, there are 5 10mm hex bolts which we need to remove.
clean the EGR cooler, I've used the pure acetone. What you wanna do is fill it up and leave it soak for a couple of hours. Take your time and clean those components properly. In the third part of the video we will also clean the intake valve ports as it's convenient now. What we ideally want to do is crank the engine. If your car is a manual then you can ignore the next step and instead you just need to jack up your car, put it in gear and just manually rotate the wheel. For me as the car is automatic I need to manually crank the engine with a ratchet. In order for this to happen I need to first remove the arch cover which is held by a couple of T25 screws. We're also gonna need to put the car in neutral. There is a hidden lever behind the center console. Once you've removed it, you just need to press it down and shift to neutral. Also make sure you've got the parking brake on. Once we've done that, we can finally crank the engine. should be done clockwise and until we get cylinder 1 to top that center point. You can do that by either looking at the timing markings or as in my case by using an endoscope and just expecting when the valves will be closed. It's quite important to make that step, otherwise you risk on getting some junk inside the cylinder which could damage things. So after you get the components to the best possible state, we can now start to put things back together. I've got quite a few new gaskets to replace, the parts numbers of which will be in the video description. There is a gasket for the throttle body too, obviously that one you might be able to reuse, but the intake manifold one should definitely be replaced. We torque to 5 Nm. As I went through the pain of removing this hidden EGR bolt once, I decided to cheat now and got the endoscope in use, it definitely saved me some nerves.
Once you get it mounted, you want to torque it to 17 Nm. Screw the pipes back. Make sure you connect the cooling hoses with the clamps. It's time to put the manifold back. Obviously, try not to forget the napkins inside the ports. I almost did it. We can now start putting plugs back. Connect the EGR pipe and torque the manifold side to 5Nm and the EGR side to 24Nm. Don't forget the fuel lines. Finally, torque the manifold according to the diagram. So that was it, thank you for watching, like and subscribe if you find it useful and also check out the links in the description to find more about some of the future services I'm planning on offering. See you next time!